And last year, uh, as part of our Black Country Fiddle uh, local history day, where we were celebrating Black Country food, uh, we decided to hold a bread pudding competition and it was very successful. Um, so when we raised the money for Millen through the bread pudding last year, when we went to present the cheque we were asked whether we were going to repeat it and I uh, flippantly said that we wouldn't do it but it would be a laugh or a great honour to try and make the world's biggest bread pudding. So that's how the idea started. It came from uh, last year's bread pudding competition. We contacted Guinness and the actual world record attempt was over £400. So of course, we haven't got the facilities in the library to cook such a monster pudding. So I called on my friend Wayne from Warburton's, who was one of the judges last year in the competition, and just announced that it's something we'd like to have a go at if Warburton's were, were interested. He said, leave it with me, and the rest is history. They took it on board. Um, it has changed because originally we did want a black country bread pudding but we found out that the record was for bread and butter pudding so that's why this year's attempt it is bread and butter pudding. The team tasked with creating a record-breaking pudding was already hard at work when we arrived at Warburton's Bakery in Wensbury to document their world record attempt. Over 1,000 pieces of buttered bread went into the pudding, along with raisins, sultanas and dried orange and lemon pieces. This custard mixture consisted of milk, eggs, sugar and a spice mix to improve the overall flavour of the pudding. These ingredients are not normally used in the factory environment.
With the making of the pudding completed, the team took a well-deserved tea break while waiting for the pudding's allotted time in the bakery's oven. Now it was time to transfer the pudding to the oven. The sheer weight of the pudding made it a real possibility that the specially made baking tray might break when the pudding was lifted towards the oven. The team had only one chance to get this right. Despite its vast size, the pudding took only 45 minutes to cook, about the same amount of time it takes to cook a small bread and butter pudding at home.
Um, whilst making a bread and butter pudding is a simple everyday task for people at home, for, for a commercial bakery it's not normal, it's not uh, our standard process at all. Um, so for example we have We've had to do food safety assessments to bring eggs into the plant and milk into the plant and fruit into the plant that we don't usually use. We've had to get um, special risk assessments and work done on how do we get a large baking tray through the oven, which we don't usually use. And Clean Bake, our tin supplier, kindly uh, custom manufactured the tray to our specification for us for the attempt. Um, so it really isn't business as usual. Very out of the ordinary, uh, at times very stressful. Um, a distraction from some of the things, you know, the other things that are going on, like with you know, with the day job, etc. But I guess you know, now it's kind of uh, we've got to this point. I think you know, there's a, a big sense, hopefully, of satisfaction from not just myself but the team, because uh, we ultimately we had one shot at this really, so we haven't really had that many opportunities to to kind of do lots and lots of practice. So um, you know, we've, we've I think we've done done quite well considering like we had one one shot to kind of get it right really. What are some of the sort of technical difficulties of making a pudding that size? Uh, well, obviously you've got the just the logistics of handling the tin and, and manoeuvring it around in a safe manner, so obviously we don't uh, get anybody hurt. Uh, also, making sure that the products obviously baked throughout. You know, there, there was lots of risks that the tin could twist in the oven because obviously it's a lot bigger than our standard tins. Um, also, scaling up the recipe because again we've done small scale trials, but a slight miscalculation if you if you scale that up to the size that we were making could make quite a big uh, a big difference um, and then I guess just the sheer manpower of obviously buttering all that bread cutting all that bread uh, layering it the preparation for the mixing etc um, so it, it's been very challenging uh, and particularly I guess the, the, the key bit was like it says oven settings and things so um, Ultimately, because we haven't got a product like this as such, because we obviously specialise in bread and the different tins, etc., it was very much a kind of, uh, you know, using the knowledge that we've got, I guess, to try and give us a good starting point. And obviously, we monitored it throughout the process and made any fine adjustments if we needed. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, it's, we've, it's just come out and it, it looks well baked. We've obviously done the core temperature testing to make sure that the product's obviously safe, uh, and, and that's obviously all come out okay. We really got involved in, in this project to, to try and set the record for bread pudding for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, it's a good thing to do, supporting the library and supporting Macmillan, uh, which I think everybody will agree is a great cause. Um, there's a number of the team here at the bakery whose lives either personally or their families have been touched by cancer, so we're, we're happy to support uh, Macmillan as a cause. Um, but in addition, community engagement projects as we call them give great development opportunities for our people uh, so Amanda Bailey has done a huge amount of work on this project um, it's been a great experience for her to learn project management techniques and how do you take a product from concept to edible product that's out there you know, for people to, to eat so it, it seems like a bit of fun but there is a serious um, side to it from, from the business's point of view in the, the development opportunities that it, that it provides to people yeah, so it's a win-win for everybody. An empty delivery van was driven onto the bakery's weighbridge and its weight recorded. The pudding was then loaded into the same van and the weighing process repeated.
the difference in the two readings obtained from the Weybridge gave us the all-important weight of the potentially record-breaking bread and butter pudding. The final weight of the pudding then across the Weybridge is 180 kilograms. With the weighing completed, all that remained was to drive the pudding to nearby Tipton Library, where it would be sold to the general public to raise money for Macmillan Cancer Support. A large crowd had gathered outside the library to greet the arrival of the pudding. The world record attempt seemed to have captured the imagination of the whole town. If everyone could just read the information as well about the allergens that it has got soya, milk, eggs and wheat. Um, well, this is giving it out, I'm collecting the money. This is the first slice of the bread and butter pudding. Very nice. Always lovely. Fingers crossed. We can only hope for the best, can't we? Yes. 
What, what's been the best part of, of working on this? The best part is the teamwork. Oh. I'll say the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've just ruined it. Sorry. Seeing it come out the oven. Yeah, see, yeah. Seeing it come out baked and obviously, you know. Yeah. Seeing people enjoying it. And whether we get a record or not, we've helped Macmillan, so that's the best thing, I think. I mean, ultimately, I think morally we feel like we've baked the biggest uh, bread, bread and butter pudding in the world. Whether that's rubber stamped officially or not is kind of, like I said, it would be a bonus. Um, but I feel that I don't think the team would be overly disappointed because our aim was, like he says, to make something uh, to help the Macmillan charity uh, and obviously working in conjunction with Tips and Library. Um, and we just wanted to make a product that looked good, and was obviously safe. Uh, and made in a safe manner, and that was the, the, the big. And, and I guess, like you said, the, the camaraderie and the teamwork, because it took a lot of effort from obviously lots of different people with different skills. And uh, like he says, I feel a lot more relieved and calm at this point than perhaps I did first thing this morning. <laughs>